Okay, so now let's look at cosine and cosine inverse. So you know that when you graph on a, when you take it out flat, your cosine graph starts high, goes low, ends high. Now, remember how we talked about how this is a function because it passes the vertical line test, but when we're doing horizontal line tests, like how are we gonna make that fit? What, what little piece do we want? And I'm gonna say, let's start high and end low. Let's do this. I think it's gonna be from here to here. So this, it gets to the bottom at what, a uh, pi? Yeah. So this is zero, one, this is pi, negative one. That's like when it gets from here to here, right? Okay, so let's see, what does the inverse look like? Okay, so they, ooh, they used this and you're like, huh, how does that, how does that reflect across the line y equals x? It totally does, watch this. But, oh, I love Desmos because this is hard for me to draw. Okay, do you see this point right here? This point came from this point. Ah, oh, look at that. Okay, now this point came from this point right here. Ooh, and then this point came from this point. Desmos makes things so much easier. Like that's very, very hard for me to draw. But here on Desmos, ah, there it is. So when you take the inverse, it reflects over the line y equals x. You just are taking the x coordinate and the y coordinate and swapping them. Or in this case, you're taking like the radians and the cosine value. Okay, what about tangent? Oh, um, actually, let's look here first. Um, so the, the domain that I was originally looking at on the red graph, the original cosine graph was zero to pi. So that means though, now the range on the inverse is zero to pi. See, and originally, uh, it was negative one or negative one to one. And now my, like my range was negative one to one. And now my domain is negative one to one. They're just swapping. Okay, so now let's think about what would the tangent graph look like? Do you remember what the tangent looks like? Oh, a whole bunch. Okay, and do you remember that there's an asymptote at negative pi over two, positive pi over two? So my original domain is not brackets, but parentheses. So my original domain on this is uh, negative pi over two to positive pi over two. Then, uh, my range is negative infinity to positive infinity. So what's going to happen when I tan inverse it? Hmm. What do you think? Tan inverse is kind of back over here. I'm going to move my face. Sorry, y'all. Okay, so tan inverse. Got to move my face again. <laughs> tan inverse of x. Oh, it like flopped. So now it has shifted, like reflected y, or y equals x. So now my range is negative pi over two to positive pi over two. My domain is negative infinity to positive infinity. So the domain and the range just swapped. And you see that it only happens one time because um, I'm just working from negative pi over two to positive pi over two. So let's go back into the notes and see what that looks like. So we knew that it was like, like that. Okay, and we just took this spot to this spot. Okay. And so then when we graphed that, it used to be that the domain was pi over two, negative pi over two, positive pi over two. Now that's gonna be the range. Sorry. So now this is gonna be negative pi over two. No, uh-uh, negative, not pi over two, because we went zero. So, uh, oh, what does that even look like? Okay, so that's going to be zero to pi. This is going to be negative one to one. So this zero is probably like right here. Okay, so it's actually going to look like, oh, what did it look like? So it would have been going like this. 
I gotta graph it. See these, I am so thankful for Desmos because I can graph this stuff. Okay, so cosine x. And cosine. Oh, like that. I'm, that's a little rough. There, like that. All right. Then this is only defined in quadrants. It's really this part of the circle. So one and two. Think about that for a sec. All right. Tangent. And so tangent, we're going to go because we did like that. So we're only going to use it negative pi over 2 to positive pi over 2. And I showed you before. So these only quadrants, 1 and negative pi over 2 to positive pi over 2 is quadrants 1 and 4. So we're not going to deal with the graph as much as can you work backwards. So let's think about it. Okay, this says arc cosine. So that's asking you um, where is cosine theta equivalent to root 2 over 2? Should make you happy. Square root 2 over 2 is our at pi over 4. You're like, well, which pi over 4? Um, well, it's got to be positive. So if it's in here somewhere, it's got to be that one, which is positive pi over 4. Okay, this one says ooh, negative root 3 over 2. So we're going cosines, so a cosine, that's going to be your pi over 6 is. And since it's negative, it's got to be back here because the x value is negative over there. Pi over 6 is, so 5 pi over 6. Because this would be 6 pi over 6, because one whole is 6 over 6. So 5 pi over 6. Arc cosine is negative 1. Okay, where is the cosine negative 1? So here, that's 180 degrees, pi. Tangent. Where are the tangents 1? Ooh, I'm working over here. Tangent is the y over the x. So where are they the same that they would give you 1? It's either here to pi over 4 or here to pi over 4. But it's negative, so you want... This one. Remember the context says we're only going in those two quadrants, so we're going to go negative pi over 4 as opposed to calling it 7 pi over 4. Now, arc tangents I think are the most challenging just because they're fractions, because it's the y over the x. Yes? This has a square root of 3, so we want to figure out how to get a square root of 3 on the top. So which things have, and it's positive, okay, so tangent, we're going like over here somewhere. Where are you going to have a square root of 3 in the y value? That would be at your pi over 3s because this, the, the order pair is 1 half square root 3 over 2. So if I want the square root of 3 in the top with no 3 on the bottom, all right, if it had a 3 on the bottom, it would be a pi over 6. Think about that. So this, if I want the, the arc tangent to be that, that's where I had square root of 3 over 2 over 1 half because the 2 simplified to 1. So that's at that positive pi over 3. Inverse tangents, inverse cosines. Great fun.